Some of you may be aware that I recently successfully completed a crowdfunding project. Everything's been shipped out to backers, so it's a complete success. Or was it? What was it? It was a recreation of my childhood computer, the ZX Spectrum. It's pretty nice, it's the same size as the original, the keyboard uses full colour silkscreen printing, and it's all capacitive touch. There's a built-in screen and speaker, it's a pretty cool bit of kit. So I put the project up on Crowd Supply last year, and we ended up smashing through the funding goal and getting 146% funded. Not bad at all. So I know the big question you're going to have, did I actually make any money from this adventure? So let's get into that first, I'll cover it really quickly, so if you don't want to watch the whole video, you'll have your answer straight away. So total revenue from the project, £12,839.57. After subtracting all my costs, in theory, my gross profit was £4,273.91. But there's quite a few caveats to that, as you'll see as we run through this presentation. So let's dig into it all and see how it works. Now, before I started selling things online, I used to wonder, why do hardware products cost so much when components and PCBs are so cheap? So let's answer that question, and we'll hopefully pull the curtain back on what's involved in a crowdfunding project. Now, there's a rule of thumb that you should be charging a minimum of 2 to 2.5 times the cost of goods sold, often abbreviated to COGS. COGS is what the goods cost you. There's a great post from Dave Jones of EEV Blog Fame that digs into this. I'll do a link in the video description, but you need some margin to cover your costs and any disasters that might happen. Now, how do you actually calculate your retail price? So you can use bottom-up pricing, you base it on your cogs plus the margin you need. Or you can do top-down pricing, you work out what people would be willing to pay for your product and you use that as your price. Now in general, you'll end up using some combination of these two approaches. One caveat is, if your top-down price, what you think people are willing to pay, ends up being less than your bottom-up price, you really have to think seriously about whether your product is viable. Some things are just not worth doing. Now how long did the project actually take? It took just over a year, so 13 months in total from initial idea to shipping to backers. So I had the initial idea for this project back in June the 14th, 2024. That's when I got a full colour silkscreen printed keyboard and it semi-worked. We launched the campaign November the 21st, 2024. We got the funds from Crowd Supply January the 17th, 2025. Completed all the manufacturing and packaging June the 4th, 2025. And we shipped all the orders to backers on July the 14th, 2025. So that's it, end to end. 13 months exactly. So let's dig into the numbers. So campaign revenue. There's quite an important distinction on crowd supply that I'm sure some people are not aware of. If you order during the campaign phase, the creator gets the full price, $99 minus various fees. For pre-orders post-campaign, crowd supply plays a house order, and that's done at the distributor price, which in my case, we worked out was $56. Now this house order from Crowd Supply, they place quite a big order, so you can see from the numbers here, in the campaign I got 118 orders, and then Crowd Supply placed another order for another 118 units. It's really important, it pushes up the number of units you get manufactured, which makes a big difference to your unit cost. Now the fees during the campaign are also quite important. We've got the breakdown here, fees per item worked out at $18.76, so that gets knocked off the $99 price. Now here's a couple of screenshots from my dashboard on Crowd Supply. So you can see the campaign orders, 118, and you can see the breakdown of the fees, and you can see Crowd Supply's house order at the distributed price of $56. So that's all the numbers from Crowd Supply. Let's have a look at my cost. So here's a breakdown of my cost. Now it's likely I've missed quite a few things. I wasn't tracking everything religiously. Now I had 300 units made. A few of them were rejected at the QA stage, I sent quite a few samples out to people, and then I have to send some replacements out to friends. Now Crowd Supply ordered 236 units, but you can't just order exactly what they asked for. There's minimum order quantities, and you've got to allow for QA failures, sample units, and replacements. So I ordered 300 units. Now this gives me a cost per unit of £30.60, which is about $7 higher than my original guesses for costs. So gross profit, this one is a bit tricky. We have our sort of top level number of 4,273, but I still have around 40 to 50 units in stock. 
so the final profit could change depending on future sales. But for now, I'll ignore that and we'll take this as our gross profit, so it's not too bad. Or is it? What about labour costs? I put an awful lot of work into this. So here's a breakdown with some very rough figures of how long I think I spent on the project. They're very much guesses, I wasn't really tracking my time. But we do end up with around 436 hours, or 54 man days. That might be a bit high, I don't know, I wasn't really tracking it. Now if we look at UK minimum wage, then our labour comes in at quite a hefty £5,323. So our profit after the labour comes off, minus 1000 but if I can sell all the stock in hand, and I assume I can sell it for the wholesale price, third you actually get back into profit. £1,000. Not bad at all. So how did I go about getting the ESP32 rainbow made? Well, regular viewers will know we've got a long-standing relationship with PCBWay. I put a link to them in the description, they are pretty good. They offer support for crowd supply projects, and I was able to get a pretty substantial discount, and it probably knocked a dollar or so off my unit price. Now, how do you come up with a recommended retail price? We talked about bottom-up pricing and top-down pricing, but you have to work out what your bottom-up pricing is. What is your COGS before you've actually worked out how many people will buy your product? Now, you'll see from the following slides, there's a lot of guesswork. Crowd Supply use Mouser as a distributor. Distributors want their profit margin. Now, typically, a distributor wants at least 40 to 60% markup on their side. This means that your retail price needs to give you your own margin and the margin for the distributor. Now, here's my guesses on prices. Now, the really tricky bit is you don't know how many people are going to order your product, so you don't know what the actual cost is going to be. More people ordering gives you cheaper costs, as components and PCBs can become cheaper the more you order. Now, you can get some of these numbers from online quotation tools, but with components, you need to make a few guesses. Here's my rough guesses at the start of the project. I'd made a few prototypes, so I kind of knew how much component cost might be, and I could get the PCB cost from PCBWay online quoting tools. Now it's pretty remarkable how quickly the cost of PCBs and SMD assembly go down the more units you order. But you can see below a certain volume, it just does not make sense. So below around 50 to 100, there's no point in me even doing this project. Now, as the volume goes up, component costs will start to dominate the total, so bomb optimization becomes really important at higher volumes. Crowd Supply give you this really handy spreadsheet to see if your project is actually viable. You can play around with the figures in yellow boxes and see what actually works. It gives you a good idea of how many units and what price you need to set to be viable. Now you also need to work out what to charge the distributor price, so Crowd Supply will use this for their house order and they'll use it for any subsequent orders. So you have to make some guesses here again. These are my finger in the air calculations. Now this table is based on RRP of $99 and it's based on my estimated COGS. Given my actual COGS, my margin is actually quite a bit lower. My original target price was $49.99. It felt very Clive Sinclair to go for this price, but it would have meant me losing a lot of money. Now something we do need to talk about is tariffs. This could have completely scuppered the project. One thing no one knew at the start of the campaign is what was going to happen with tariffs. I started this project before the US elections, and Trump was already talking about tariffs. Now something that probably isn't clear is that tariffs are calculated on what the importer is paying for the goods. It doesn't necessarily matter what the underlying cost is. So that means it should be calculated on what Mouser paid me, £12,839.57. Doesn't matter what I paid for my goods, it's what the importer is paying for the goods. And since I'm outside the US, it's the total price that Mouser paid me. So who actually pays the tariff? Well, we have two options. DDP, delivery duty paid. That means the seller pays all the import duties, VAT and customs clearance. Or you have DAP, delivery at place. That means the buyers are responsible. Now, crowd supply stipulate DDP for shipments to Mouser. So that means I'm on the hook for all the tariffs and duties. As you can see from the table above, this had the potential to cost me a lot of money. At a certain tariff level, I would have had to cancel the project and issue refunds to everyone. Fortunately, I was able to argue that the product was sufficiently transformed in the UK to justify a change of country of origin to the UK. But that's entirely at the whim of the customs guys, and next time I may not be so lucky. Let's talk about certification. There's a lot of confusion and incorrect information around CE certification. 
Many people were quite confident to tell you that you don't need certification for a hobby or dev board. You don't need certification if you're using a pre-qualified module. Now, neither of these are actually true. If you're selling your hardware to consumers, it needs to be certified. And even if your module is already certified, you still need to certify your build of it. Now, what do I actually mean by certifying my hardware? Is there some special place where you take your hardware and they give you a big rubber stamp of approval? Well, not really. CE is self-certification. You, the manufacturer, certify that your hardware complies with various standards. Testing labs give you the evidence to confidently back this up. So when you self-certify, you are basically saying to someone else, if you test my hardware against these standards, it will pass. Some things you can be pretty confident of. You need to comply with restriction of hazardous substances. This should be as simple as making sure your manufacturer does it in a compliant way. Things like EMC, electromagnetic compatibility, and RED, radio equipment directive, are more difficult. My advice is to get your board tested by a proper lab. Now, depending on where you go, this can get expensive quickly, especially if you keep failing and having to retest. I got some really useful advice using the simple start service from Smander. Based on my schematics and intended use case, they were able to tell me exactly what standards I should be using. This meant that when I spoke to the test lab, I actually had a chance of understanding what they were talking about. One really useful tip was that unless I was actually using the wireless capabilities of the ESP32, I didn't actually need to get VED certification. This made things a lot cheaper. I was recommended a very affordable test lab in China. Now, the downside of using a lab in China is you have to ship your hardware to China. And of course, if the hardware fails, you can't just pop into the lab and try and fix it. If this is a concern, then you should find a local lab. Now, how do you even get people to come to your campaign page? Crowdsupply help with this. There are already many people who are back campaigns and receive the Crowdsupply newsletter, but it really is up to you to market yourself. I'm very fortunate. I've got a semi-popular YouTube channel, a newsletter, and a blog. This gave me an existing audience that I could tap into. I also created a newsletter for this particular project before I even launched on Crowdsupply. That let me build my audience before I was accepted onto Crowdsupply, so I had a ready-made bunch of people already keen for the project. I made sure to keep this audience in the loop on everything that was happening in the project, so updates go out on Crowdsupply and also go out to my own list of people. If you don't have an audience already, then you really need to get yourself out there and do some marketing. Social media has to become your friend. Now, we also realise referring to people as the audience sounds absolutely awful, but I'm not sure community sounds any better. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, where can I buy one? This sounds great. Well, it's still up on Crowdsupply. Please order one. They've got stock right now. And if they keep getting orders, I'll do another production run. Would I use Crowdsupply again? Well, there are some really good benefits. They do provide a platform for doing crowdfunded pre-sales campaigns. And they also add on their own house order, so you get decent volume. And you get the money up front for a big production run. This is very valuable. I would have had to seriously think about whether I wanted to do such a large production run without knowing there was sufficient demand. It would have been a significant investment on my part, almost £9,000. may not seem much, much to some people, but it's a lot of money to me. You get all the distributed benefits, so crowd supply deal with all the complexities of selling to individual customers. I don't need to worry about collecting sales tax, dealing with chargebacks, or all the problems that come with selling to individuals. The nice thing about having a distributor, I just ship a bunch of big boxes to Mouser and they handle it all. There's a lot to be said for being able to hand that off to someone else. Accountability. Crowd Supply have run a lot of campaigns. They know what makes a good campaign and what makes a bad campaign. Things like regular updates to backers. Even if you think you've got nothing to say, send out an update so people know you haven't just run off with the money. They also really maybe do realistic shipping days. They were very careful to make sure expectation with backers were set appropriately. See my international shipping complaints later. The downside is, it costs money to use a distributor. They're not doing it out of the kindness of their hearts. They want to make a profit. This impacts the amount of money you can make from your products and it has a knock-on effect to how much you need to charge. If I was selling direct, I could have probably charged quite a bit less and still made a profit. You have to do things properly. You're selling something through a distributor. They care about their reputation. Things like CE certification become important. You have to ship with proper documentation and safety information. It needs to be in multiple languages. Most products on Tindy don't worry about these things. Everything is shipped to the US and then sent out again. 
It's great if the majority of your customers are US based, not so great for the rest of the world. Shipping becomes a significant amount of money. And then related to the above, tariffs. Shipping everything to the US so it could be sent out makes sense in a low tariff world. Starts to make a lot less sense when tariffs are high. For people outside the US, this could be very bad. You could end up losing a lot of money. So what went well? Working with CrowdSupply was really useful. Having someone keeping you accountable and on track is invaluable. You could definitely do this without them, but you'd need good discipline. CE certification turned out to be a lot less complex than I expected, mostly because I spent some money and got some advice. Don't be afraid to do this and make sure you allow for this in your pricing. Now, there's a really great community forming around the project and that's really nice to see. Making everything open source is the way to go. Don't be afraid of sharing your terrible code to people. What went better than expected? I was very lucky, my hardware just worked. Every project app I made moved things forward. The firmware just seemed to fall into place without a huge amount of effort. AI tooling definitely helped with the website and building out all the supporting code. There's no way I could have built everything without the help of AI. What didn't go so well? Oh my god, international shipping. I had no idea this would be one of the most frustrating, opaque and mysterious parts of the project. I have posted things internationally before, but nothing of this value. For over a month I spent my time looking at the tracking page, wondering why the boxes hadn't moved for days. I'd raised support requests, and that seemed to magically unstick things, but I had no idea why they were stuck in the first place. Now if you're in the UK, make sure you get yourself an EORI number. There's nowhere to put it in any of the shipping forms, but you need it on the paperwork. So would I recommend this? It's definitely an experience. Pricing is so difficult though. You need to make sure you can sell at a high enough price to make things work, but a low, low enough price that people actually want to buy it. Lean on crowd supply. They've got lots of experience with crowdfunding and delivering products. They know what works and what doesn't. Was it financially worth it? As with most fun things, if I'd worked those hours for my normal consulting rates, I'd have made a lot more money. I think I made a small profit, so I can't really complain. Would I do it again? Honestly, I couldn't really say for sure. I need to have a very compelling idea with a very large customer base. Now I'm not going to pretend I've come out of any newfound wisdom or some great understanding of the world. In the end, I didn't get rich, but I did build something that real people are using and having fun with, and that's worth a lot. So thanks for watching. I hope this was interesting or useful. Full details are in the blog.